morning. This is the Eager Beaver Show. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, The Misfy Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing, your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters, CanadianTarot.com, your uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Peppermaster, hot pepper sauces made from farm-fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. Well, good morning and hello, kids, and welcome to season four and episode number 414 of the Daily Beaver Morning Show here on the Cryer Media Network. Yeah, 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 yeah. Today, recording day, is Friday, June 28, 2024, and it's a beautiful day at the Beaver Lodge, as you can see. I'm your host, the eager beaver pronouns he, him, hey, Mr. Beaver A, and with me, as always, is my good friend, Mr. Grizzly. A big thank you goes to our podcast founding sponsors, The Pepper Master, The Miss V Mysteries from Corvin Moon Publishing, and CanadianTarot.com. We have um, a packed show for you today but before we do anything else uh mr grizzly how's your mental health doing today sir you know that's a good question um i haven't had a coffee yet and when i went to make some i realized there's none to be made so i'm not fully awake yet <laughs> to say the least <laughs> so like i could be a mess i could be good i don't know i'm not awake <laughs> you know what i think it's actually pretty good because I'm, I'm i'm able to laugh about a little thing like that that there is no coffee to be had I think I'm doing pretty good, all things considered. So, yeah, yeah I think I'm pretty good. And you, how are you, sir? I am not the best today. Um, I, I don't know if I want to get into it publicly yet. Yeah, no, uh, fair, fair point. Because Probably I'm, for the best. No, how do that. Uh, it, it, it's not my information to share. Right. Um, but uh, I was sitting down to watch the debate last night and uh, about. 17, 20 minutes in, I got a phone call. Um, there was an emergency uh, that I had to tend to. Uh, everyone is okay, ultimately. Um, but, um, yeah, kind of um, uh, changed uh, the vibe here right. uh, at the house. And it will probably be rather expensive um, as well. Yeah. So... Uh, we're just uh, processing at the moment. Um, so um, last night, um, it, it, I tended to other things. Right. Um, so, um, but I did get to, um, so uh, like I said, I probably will be telling you more. I just, it's not information that's mine. And I want to make sure that uh, um, while everybody is okay physically, that we know that everybody is still okay emotionally Yeah. before um, sharing things with the, the public here. Which is on that. That's, that's basically the, the just, just the that, right course, the right course of action. Out of respect for, I, I like, I know that I, I share a lot and, you know, yeah. we have like semi public lives, um, but process. Mm -hmm. there, there's an order and things so the Indeed. things must be done and uh, right now uh, it's just uh, uh right now it's for it's for family <clears throat> yeah. uh for inner family later on for damn fam 
I'm sure. Well, yeah, maybe <laughs> maybe it gets shared later, but yes. for the time being, it's but, uh, it's a private matter. I, I I see the hugs in the chats and then and that, so thank you very much. Thank you for understanding. Um, but the show must go on. The show must right? go on. Show must go on, and uh, there's nothing we can do about it until uh, you know business is open and all that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah, you know, for now, we will set the worry aside to when we actually have to deal with it. And right now, we will focus on delivering for you what it is that uh, um, you have come here for. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> All right. I didn't see so, any of the debate. Uh, I had friends say, are you going to watch it? And I'm like, no. They're like, why not? And I go, uh, I'll watch it later on YouTube uh, in dribs and drabs when I can pause it and walk away. <laughs> because... I remember watching his debate with Hillary Clinton a few years back and I stayed, I was in Geneva at the time. So I had to stay up really late to watch it and, uh, or get up really early, I guess would be the opposite. But I, 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 15 minutes in, I'm like, I'm out, I'm out. I can't, I just couldn't stomach it. So mm. yeah, I didn't watch it last night. I will check out bits and pieces of it today as I have the time to do so. Uh, I understand most people have, basically said the same thing it was like just a shit show from the start ah uh, yeah it really 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 was okay so uh i did watch it um part of the stuff that happened uh last night to given it pretty emotional uh i ended up just crashing i actually um i crashed face down on the bed actually facing the wrong way fully closed lights on yeah that's exhausting yeah yeah, uh, and I'm pretty sure it was like around 10.30 at the latest. <laughs> um, so uh, I woke up around 3-something, so um, I watched the debate then. <laughs> uh, since uh, there's not much to do at 3-something. Usually. Morning. Hello, wide awake. So... Um, Again, do you want me I to do show this things. clip? Uh, that's a different clip. Uh, but oh, yes, okay. I, I will want you to show this clip. Uh, because, uh, let's put it this way. I watched it so you didn't have to. Mm -hmm. um, there's going to be one clip going around uh, today. And it's the time uh, about three questions in where uh, Biden was in the middle of the sentence and then sort of forgot what he wanted to say. Yeah, As I heard about that. happens to all of us. You know, there's that one word we can't get that's not coming. And then sort of stammered, stammered, and um, and then sort of like said, well, and then tried to put something together, and it came out at the end, we beat Medicaid. And finally we beat Medicaid or something, and then Trump picked that ball and ran with it. Um, there was obviously something not well with Biden health-wise. He seemed to be a little congested because he didn't have full voice, uh, which is terrible for a debate especially when you have to be firm and go on attack um, because you don't have the volume to go with it. Um, so uh, for the bunch of people that watch debates like the first 15, 20 minutes and then check out, um, it confirmed all the stuff, the narratives about Biden. He's frail, he's weak, he's forgetful, all that kind of stuff. Uh, Trump, the first question actually seemed it was one of the com some of the calmest I've ever seen him. Um, one of the hilarious parts of the debate is whenever there's a side by side, watching the face of the other person. Uh, Biden often looked like he was um, he was probably doing this thing because I do it too, where you put your head down, and you're focusing, but sometimes his mouth is open, whatnot, and he's moving a little more slowly, so it looks sort of sort of looked like he's like. lost a bit right so the visuals like if you're watching it with um the sound off it's not good um but trump was not better because well trump has almost the same critique that people make of christian freeland you can make of trump right he's fidgety his face moves whatnot and mm -hmm. like this and he has no poker face when you land one on him you know and um, biden did land a few and, and you can tell uh punk uh, that uh, trump felt it Let's put it that way. So, so if you watch the first twenty minutes or so, uh, yeah, that's it. Biden lost. It's done. Mm -hmm. Biden did get better as the night went on. 
uh, and a couple of times, I mean, Trump did some really stupid things. Like at one point he was talking about people that looked into the January 6th stuff and said, you know, these people should go to jail. And it's like Biden, just like, oh, dude, and just like turned right around and said, J there's only one convicted Philly on this stage and I'm looking at him. <laughs> say, Boom. Ah. And, you see, and, and, and you could see yeah. Trump's face was, Trump's was like, so, yeah. so his face was going, yeah, yeah, you got me. That was a good one. It's like, but it's sort of like, yeah, well, yeah, it's true. Also, like, it's like his whole body language is sort of like, is confessing, yeah, I am a felon, or, or mm -hmm. like you like. So it's like, why would you do that? that? That was just really weird. And then there was another one, uh, and then uh, you know, uh, Trump went into uh, you know the, the military stuff. Uh, and uh, Biden went into the, you know, like this having Trump having called veterans suckers and losers. And right. Trump said he never said that. And he had like 19 people say he didn't say that. Yeah, because you know what happens when you contradict him. But the one person who did say it was a four star general. And uh, later on in the debate, Trump couldn't let it go. So he brought it back. So Biden landed another one. Says, yeah. And then you fired that general, didn't you? <laughs> Because <laughs> it's, it's like, oh, because, and, you know, uh, over the course of the evening, like when Biden finally decided, you know, he was going to take the gloves off, he you know, called Trump a whiner several times, he did call Trump a loser. Um, so that kind of stuff gets under his skin. And then there came a moment where, um, you know, that Trump really wants the Nobel Prize. Oh, yeah. Really wants He the thinks Nobel he's Prize. actually deserving too, which is the funny part. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, Trump is basically, by this time, if the mess, if his note was don't be a dick, he failed on that. Um, and he seemed contained in the first question, second question, but then it just became like this rambling, sort of like his rally type thing. You know, he goes into a ramble. Everything, everything he did was the best ever. Everything Biden did was the worst in history and, and all that kind of stuff, right? Which makes it very easy for someone to turn around and disprove. Um, but yeah, he's going back into the sort of like, I'm the worst president ever. No, you're the worst president ever. And all that kind of stuff. I know you're Biden, like, <laughs> Yeah, right. So, and then Biden just like comes around and says, you know, in those 15 Nobel laureates, they all said that you would destroy the economy. And then there was another 159 you know, economic scholars or political scholars or whatnot. And they all rated you the worst president ever. And you could see Trump standing there and his, he literally convulsed twice. Oh yeah. Upon hearing that. Yeah. Like his head went snap, snap, I guess. And then from that point on, it was just a nonstop verbal diarrhea. Blah, 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 blah. Just like Biden, Biden had gotten to him there, but Biden didn't have his full voice. And then Biden to his credit ended the whole damn thing with a roundhouse. And if they didn't have to do closing statements, that would have been just like, boom, like this. But the final question was about, of course, will Trump accept the election results? And then by that time, of course, that previous thing had happened. So he's going like, we're on the verge of World War III and just take dictators don't respect Biden. They'll respect me. And like throughout that whole night. And it's like, again, uh -huh. it's like, why would you want dictators to respect you? number one and throughout the night several times bragging about the sway he's got with putin apparently trump will solve the whole ukraine russia thing between the time he's elected on november 20th and the time he assumes office on january whatever yes mm. and he'll also get that wall street journalist out because he did so good from getting things from putin the full the four years he was president right but so it's literally the same playbook um with the my with the mic off, you can tell every now and then that Trump was it was just killing him, again oh, by yeah. the expressions on his face. But Biden. So anyway, Trump was asked about the you know pledge to accept the world election rules or results, and you know World War Three is coming, and dictators don't respect Biden. And it's like uh, asked again, still talking about Ukraine and Russia, third time asked because they have a certain amount of time, and a couple of times, you know. Trump went in and you know started talking and it, rather than ask answer the question, attack Biden. It's like you have eighty seconds left. <laughs> it's like a, asking you again. So this was sort of like this, and then for the third time he's asked, asked, and once again he did the same thing that he did last time. He answered yes, if yes, if 
if the results are fair or if it's a fair like, but yes uh, if uh, which is not yes yeah so he's 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 tweaking it's it for his same, satisfaction yeah. but that, that that was the same result the last time so will you accept the results i i will accept the results if i win there's always an if there's it's never just yes it's an if if the results were fair and who gets to decide the results are fair well Emperor Frump, Mr. Frumpled Thinskin. So, and then Biden turns around right at the end, and this is quote verbatim. I doubt that you'll accept it because you're such a whiner. The idea if you lose again, you accept anything? You can't stand loss. Something in you snapped when you lost last time. Wow. That's, and uh... had it ended right there. Yeah, that would have been great. Perfect. Like this, but then they had a commercial break and he came back for opening statements and then uh, Biden's wasn't strong because instead of doing something that was supposed to be rallying and uniting, unifying and you know, vision and right this, we're talking about like the critical, you know, like the last time we were talking about like the battle for the soul of the nation, he was just there, you know, I will do this policy, I will do this policy, I will do this policy. And then again, you'd think like Trump would run with it. Nope, he didn't run with it. He was just sort of like, it was just like an everything in the kitchen sink, bunch of verbal diarrhea. Like this, like in two minutes, he tried to fit in Afghanistan and the economy, and like this, and how Biden was all the worst on all of that stuff, like all, all, all together. And it's just, it's like, oh my God. They even got to one point like this after like Biden had gotten under his skin, is where they were talking about uh, the ability to be president. And, you know, Trump is like, I'm in the best shape ever, and whatnot. And then it's like, and then Biden like turned around and says, yeah. I can't remember what the exact thing was, but I think it was like 6'3", 235 or something. Mm-hmm. And he goes, 6'3", 235. And he's just like, see for yourself. <laughs> and it's just like, ah. And then Biden and then Biden then turned around and says, hey, because like, you know, Trump is like always challenging him to like, you know, t- to take that person, man, woman, cat TV right. test, right? To see if Biden will, will pass it, right? Because Trump faced that one. So it was like Biden said, hey, how about this? Let's go play a round of golf. I'll carry my whole bag the whole way. Can you? And then they got into a little snit about their like their golf game. It's like it's like the moderators were like, oh, come on. Let's not wow. be childish here. Like this, but the two old men starting <laughs> to fight about who has a better golf game. <laughs> Well, we all know Trump, Trump cheats. It's like, I it's know, well known. But it's, it's well known. Like this, like, it just, oh, uh, man. The one part that was uh, good and that the moderator screwed up is when they were talking about January 6th. I guess, and then Biden had turned around to Trump at one point because Trump had said that once he becomes president again, that he will pardon the January yes. 6ers who have been convicted. And then he, he finished a whole bit and I guess he, he turned around and he was looking at him and says, what are you going to do? Right. And Biden had timed it well to be at the end of his like minute or whatever he is of speaking to pass it over to Trump. And Trump look, lifted his finger, like said, like, can I talk? And we wanted to answer it. And the moderator goes, well, yes, but we're at this other minute. So I have a question for you. And then the question and then took Trump off it. Mm-hmm. And it's like, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. moderators for fuck's sakes yeah it's like when there's a moment happen and let it play out the guy had used this minute the time was going to trump anyway and he had asked him a question you did not need to intervene the show was not about you it was going somewhere <sighs> we had like biden did this whole lead up and was like you know when it comes to the partners like what are you going to do what are you going to do man like, what are you going to do and he was like just like and he wanted Trump, you could tell he was lifting his finger like this, like can I? He was gonna answer. And it's just Jay Tapper. Shut up. Let him Dude. speak. Let him dig his own hole. Now, the reason I passed you this, because I could show you clips. But that was about the highlights. Uh, because Biden wasn't in form like this. They're they're not animated. They're not fun. They're not right. they're, they're, the the dynamism isn't there. Um but he did, he landed like, th- it, if you're listening to just the words, right? He landed like four or five of them. So hopefully, you know, on the stump, whenever they're talking about that, he'll be, a, he'll have those ones. But with Trump, but 
as the, the narrative is going to be that Biden was frail and weak and he had that forgetful moment, whatnot, but Biden did, if you stayed for the whole thing, and it was painful. The thing is, Biden got under Trump's skin. We'll see what happens. But uh, because, yeah, you could you could see over the course of the evening that Trump started discipline and then started, at the end, he was just a, just a rambling mess. Mm. Just a rambling mess. Uh, the problem is, is that because Biden didn't have full voice and the full energy, um, Sorry, he my couldn't, phone is going crazy here. He wasn't able to sell the whole, um, with, uh, with the energy and the vigor and the volume uh, and the speed, uh, that is needed to really sound convincing and sound like, like the state of the union. Right. Right. Like that's where people were yelling at him and like this and heckling him. And he was like, Oh yeah, you want to do that, buddy? Snap, snap. Right. Like this. And he looked like he was like, he, yeah, I was like, like, come on, bring it on. I'm like, you know, prize champion fighter, like ready to get in the ring. This was not that. Mm. This was not that. So, uh, the clip I want to show you is something, uh, that was sent to me on uh, the web. And, uh, this is debate moderation how we would all love it to be done. Uh, I got this from uh, Derek the Jedi. Uh, at, uh, at Derek never fails. And this is uh, the moderator is uh, Kyle Clark from Denver, Colorado, Channel 9. Just a second. Here. Just hold it up. I don't know. what I had the clip and it disappeared on me. So I'm just going to reload it here. Re-rack the tape. That's what they used to say in the business. Re-rack the tape. Let's go. All right, here we go. Colorado's third district, we did have a very close election, but we also had 50,000 Republicans not to show up to vote. So just to be clear, uh, Ms. Bobert, you blame Republican voters for the fact that you nearly lost a safe <laughs> seat and not your own conduct. Ms. Bobert, you're running an ad right now that says deport them all. Describe in detail, in detail. how you see mass deportation playing out in the cities and towns mm -hmm. of the 4th Congressional District. Yep. First of all, uh, having over 10 million illegal aliens mm -hmm. coming into our country in under four years, <laughs> this is unprecedented. Uh, I'll note that you didn't make any attempt to answer the actual question, which is who should be doing this? You introduced uh, articles of impeachment yeah. against the president for his handling of the border. That move was blocked by Republican House leadership. Curry Pardon me, was please. Sent to committee. It Pardon was not me, please. Blocked. It was blocked by sending it to committee, so you didn't get the full uh, House vote that you wanted. <laughs> no, so I did a question get the full House all... vote, and it was I apologize. Sent to this is going to be a long evening if okay, you speak well, over the facts, okay? Say it right. So, a question <laughs> for everybody up here. A question on this for Mr. Sonnenberg. You have also called for mass deportations, and let's talk about that economic impact. Absolutely. I would use the police, I would use the National Guard. Those people aren't the ones working. Those people are the ones causing the, yes. the uh, uh, crime to go up in uh, uh, in Denver and the area around. Uh, imagine, Receipts? if you will, Do you have any evidence there? to support that? Evidence. Because Our law enforcement has, has not put that forward. I'm just curious where you're getting mm. that, that causation. Mm. How would in that work factor. if the National Guard or the military were to come into Douglas County where you live and, and start rounding people up. I think that it is time that we take it very seriously for what it Would is. Would you like to answer the hey, question? Hey, I, have, I will, because <laughs> I do. Ask somebody that's uh, Mr. Holtorf, Mr. Holtorf, Mr. Holtorf, if you've been interrupting people constantly, I would ask you to stop. Got Ms. Flora, could you yes. please answer the question? Yes. Bringing an out-of-state yeah, National know. Guardsman or the U.S. military in Douglas County, do you feel like that would work? And we also, by the way, have okay. to stop the President of the United States from suing We're border gonna move states on. for The question was about work. the actual work of rounding people up in Douglas the, County. There, but we, was, took a, we took a couple tries at that. There, Ms. Bober, this session of Congress is on track to be one of the least productive in history in terms of the bills passed. Your Republican House colleague Andy Biggs said, we have nothing to go out there and campaign on. Another House Republican, Chip Roy, said the Republican majority does not have one material, meaningful, significant accomplishment. And that's what the Republicans are saying. I would give you one more opportunity if you would like to answer his question, which is the number of bills you've prime sponsored that have been signed by the president. Uh, so my Pueblo Jobs Act has been signed into a number, law. A number, please. That, that is one. Got it. Ms. Flora, <laughs> you've called on all parents to pull their children out of public elementary and middle schools. And last week, the Colorado Republican Party told parents to pull their children out of all public schools. Mm. If parents were to take your advice seriously mm. and pull all the kids out of public schools, what would America without a public education system look like? 
That's a great question. You know, the situation, Kyle, is I'm very proud of the work that I've been doing on school choice. Okay. I, I was hopeful for an answer about what would happen if folks followed your advice and pulled all the kids out of public schools, but we'll leave that for another conversation. <laughs> you resigned your position as House Minority Leader after your drunk driving arrest surface this mm. year. And my question is not about what you did while drunk, which for anybody who missed it was speeding up I-25 <laughs> at 90 miles per hour so fast a trooper thought that you were trying to race him. Then you reached for your gun during the traffic stop. The you gun? asked the trooper to call the state patrol's lobbyist. Then you asked him to keep the arrest out of the media. My question to you is about what you did while sober. You did not disclose your drunk driving arrest to your Republican colleagues when they were considering you for leader and electing you. What does that tell voters about your judgment? Well, thank you, Kyle, for that. I mean, I uh, should not have done it. Was it a mistake not to tell your colleagues when they were considering you for leader, knowing that you had something so big and embarrassing in your recent past? Yeah, I... You told a state house colleague who had lost his son in the Aurora Theater shooting that he needed to let go of his son's murder. Mm. You called a legislator of color buckwheat mm. during a floor debate. Not buckwheat. You suggested that people with disabilities are like people who took the risk of running with the bulls in Pamplona. And you suggested that Miss Bobert dresses like a prostitute. Do you regret saying any of those things? And why do you talk to people like that? Oh. See, it's that last statement right there. Why do you talk to people like that? Now that my friends, is a textbook example of how you should moderate the debate. That's not an answer to the question. We're going to move on. <laughs> I think I need a cigarette. <laughs> and you don't smoke. <laughs> that was, that, that was, was perfect. That's how it, that's how you moderate though. That's not an answer to the question. Could you answer the question? No. Okay. We're going to move on. That's how you do it. That is how you moderate a debate. And in this debate, that didn't happen whatsoever. Yeah. You, don't, you don't let them spin. No, 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 no. That is not an answer to the question. You're spinning this. Answer the question or we will move on. They Thank you. Trump, we'll move on. They gave Trump like two minutes and they just like spewed this whole bunch of nonsense and says, okay, Mr. Biden, President Biden, how, what would you do to solve? <laughs> it's like, yeah. really? Yeah. Answer the goddamn question. If you can't answer the question, we're moving on. I, I saw a clip of Daniel Dale who called out his lies in real time. It was amazing. <laughs> amazing. Canada's Daniel Dale, by the way, who's been with CNN for a few years, who has been the basic uh, fact checker for everything every president or presidential candidate has said or done over the last eight years now, is it, I think? Yeah, it'd be eight years because he, he was yeah. brought down to CNN when Trump first got elected because he was pointing out his lies for Toronto Star, was it at the time, if memory serves? And uh, yeah. yeah, CNN said, let's get that guy down here. He's fact checking everything. That's this guy. That's what he lives for. And he's good at it. Yeah, and he called him out on every single lie. He must have been very busy because yeah. I watched that debate. Linda, very, I like very Linda. Busy. answer the question truthfully or get called out. And that is what that guy just did in that debate. <laughs> oh, that was, that was beautiful. Yep. How many? I figured I would present. One. There you go. Thank you. <laughs> and you know what? If that same question was asked in the debate in Canada, that's all Pierre would be able to say as well. One. Yeah. yeah. That's how you do it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> all right. Uh, speaking of that, um, remember when we talked yesterday about um, Goldie Gamari uh, making time for uh, Mr. Robinson? Yeah. Uh, well, it seems that yesterday uh, she decided that she was going to respond to what was going on. And oh. uh, yes. And uh, didn't, didn't Facebook try to pull down your your statement? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, Which everything was that I said on the correct, factually correct. Yes, and I had sources and whatnot. But since we can't, you know, publish news articles to go along with it because, yeah, you know, it won't. It's kind of hard to show where you got your sources. And didn't somebody so, point out that the moderator for Facebook is a former Rachel Curran? Yeah. I'm not sure the, the moderator, but uh, something she's she, she's some. High up there with Facebook Canada. I, I doubt. I doubt she was directly paying attention to yours in particular. You know what I mean? But somebody may have pointed it out, and she just said, "Okay, take it down." Speculation, pure speculation. But right. it's like, but you you posted facts which did not paint their narrative very well. So 
they block. Yes, this is probably somebody who, you know, who is pro Goldie or pro Tommy seeing that Mm -hmm. and then reporting it as like misleading information. Then Facebook does that thing. So this was misleading information and says, do you like this? And then doesn't give you any way to talk to a real person or interact with a real person so that you can explain how it's not right. This information, they just give you like, what are you, what is it? Click the circle, click the circle and we'll get back to you. And it's like, so, you know, we've, we've had that happen to us on, uh, on YouTube as well in a certain way. And it's like, mm. so it's a crapshoot when you appeal, basically. It is a crapshoot. Uh, and then we, we had a, we had a, something we were dinged on the crier channel on our Facebook our, our YouTube and we fought, it didn't touch our YouTube, yeah. but it was and the crier saw, YouTube. Yeah. Somebody saw it on the crier and reported that one there. And we fought back because it's like, well, what they're reporting, we didn't say or do. Yeah. <laughs> like, I know. At all. But that's, but that's, that's the whole thing is that they'll report something even that's not factual and whatnot. And it, it gets it taken off yeah. when the moment of the greatest attention is there. Um, so, yeah. I have um, Daniel Dale's fact check here if you want to have a look at this video. Um, well, we only have 20 minutes, so I want to... Two minutes and 50 seconds. Okay. It's not long. It's like I wasn't going to show like a 30-minute thing. It's two minutes and 50 seconds, and uh, this, is, this is pure joy. He said some Democratic states allow people to execute babies after birth, an egregious lie that is illegal in every state. He said everybody, even Democrats, wanted Roe v. Wade overturned. Roe was supported by two-thirds of Americans, even more Democrats. He said every legal scholar wanted Roe overturned, abortion returned to the states. Legal scholars have told me directly this is not true. He said the U.S. currently has the biggest budget deficit ever. No, that happened under Trump in 2020. He said the U.S. currently has a record trade deficit with China. That also happened under Trump in 2018. He said Biden personally gets a lot of money from China. Zero evidence of this. He said there were no terror attacks during his presidency. In fact, there were multiple attacks. He said Iran didn't fund Hamas, Hezbollah, other terror groups under his presidency. Iran, in fact, did. He said Biden wants to quadruple people's taxes. That is pure fiction. He said the U.S. has provided way more aid to Ukraine than Europe had. It's actually the opposite. He said the U.S. has provided about $200 in Ukraine aid. It's closer to $110 billion. Uh, He said 18 or 19 million people have crossed the border under Biden. That is millions too high. He said many of these migrants are from prisons or mental institutions. His own campaign cannot corroborate this. He said Biden has only created jobs for illegal immigrants. Total nonsense. He said Nancy Pelosi turned down his offer of 10,000 National Guard troops on January 6th. There's no evidence she even got such an offer. It was the president, not Pelosi, who had the power to deploy the D.C. Guard. He said Pelosi now acknowledges she turned down the troops. No, her office tell me, tells me this claim is still a lie. He said he deployed the National Guard to Minneapolis in 2020. Actually, that was the Democratic governor. He spoke of, quote, ridiculous fraud in the 2020 election. Zero evidence of any widespread fraud. He said NATO was going out of business before he took office. Completely, clearly absurd. He said the U.S. was paying 100 percent of NATO before he came along. The U.S. made up about 71 percent of NATO defense spending, not 100. He said he, not Biden, is the one who lowered insulin prices in Medicare. He did it for some seniors, but Biden did it for far more. He said Biden indicted him. Again, no evidence Biden has had a personal role in any of these four prosecutions. He said Europe takes no U.S cars, just not true. He spoke of food prices quadrupling under Biden. That's a wild exaggeration, though they are up. He said Biden made up the idea he called dead service members suckers and losers. No, the Atlantic magazine reported that, and then former Trump chief of staff John Kelly corroborated it. He said Biden called black people, quote, super predators for 10 years. Biden never once deployed that phrase, let alone for 10 years, though he did at least once speak of, quote, predators without specifying it was about black people. He said his Trump tax cut was the largest in U.S. history. Not true, though, in fairness, Biden, Biden Biden also said this. Uh, Trump said China and others stopped buying from Iran under him. China never stopped. He revived his pet lie. I don't know how many times I've done it, that he signed the Veterans Choice Program into law. Barack Obama did that in 2014. Trump signed an expanded version in 2018. And finally, Trump said Biden got rid of that veterans program. Biden has not done that. <laughs> like, holy Hannah. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah. Like, how much uh, bullshit can you handle? <laughs> my word. That's ridiculous. All right. Um, Golda Gamari. Now, first thing that happened is uh, we, um, Doug Ford piped up. Yes. Sort of. Kind of. Tell me where you've 
seen this play before. Uh, Mr. Grizzly, uh, the, the tweet from uh, Mr. DeMello. Yeah, and you want the news clip? Uh, from the, uh, the one from Colin DeMello. Yes, just 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 the, the tweet. Clip yeah. Or just no, the no, tweet. Just a, okay, just the tweet. Got to be more specific. Yes. So. I'm not always 100 percent sure. <laughs> so. Oh, I got something playing in my background here. Just a second. I don't know what's going on here. I got stuff going off everywhere on this thing. Okay, here we go. Now I have it. Just took me a second. That's not it. Here it is. There we go. Took a second. The Premier's office just released a statement. The Premier is extremely disappointed in MPP Gamari's decision to engage with and give a platform to an individual whose behavior and beliefs are at odds with our government. It is deeply regrettable that this engagement took place. As soon as this matter was brought to our attention, the post was immediately taken down. Uh-huh. Okay. Where have we seen this before? Oh. <laughs> a statement of denial issued through a journalist, not on letterhead, with no audio, no video, that appears nowhere on the leader's or the party's site. Yeah, that would be the um, leader of the opposition, Pierre Polyev. Mm -hmm. On what occasion? Uh, when it had to do with the Nazi brunch. There you go. It was Brian Lilly who released the statement. Yep. Nothing to prove that he ever said that. Yep. Yeah. Uh, now, it's deeply regrettable that this interaction took place. Mm -hmm. And she took down the tweet. Mm -hmm. The, hi, Tommy. It was nice meeting you. But um, the tweet that I showed yesterday about her being outraged that Tommy Robinson got arrested, yeah. even though she's the chair of the Standing Committee of Justice, mm -hmm. you'd think that somebody being arrested would be a cue to not come out <laughs> and tweet something claiming that his arrest, there's something somehow wrong with his arrest. She comes out <clears throat> because um, she got uh, wrapped on her fingers by one of Canada's Muslim associations. Mm -hmm. And she decided to publish this. I condemn all forms of Islamophobia and anti-Semitism. Hate has no place in Ontario. I was not aware of Mr. Robinson's history prior to our meeting. I chose to meet with him because I am an Iranian-Canadian immigrant who has been speaking out on behalf of human rights violations by the Islamic regime in Iran against Iranians in Iran and their attempts to spy and threaten Iranians in Canada. He wanted to discuss the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps, the IRGC, which was recently listed as a terrorist entity in Canada. We discussed IRGC terrorist, its impact in Canada, and the six-year effort of the Iranian-Canadian diaspora to put the IRGC on the Canadian terror list. I hope that clarifies. And that's in response to a tweet, I believe, from the National Coalition of Canadian Muslims. Yes. Um, who've had an issue with Goldie before, remember, because she said that you know, basically anybody saying Alwa Akbar is basically, you know, pretty much issuing a call to violence. Now, um, there's a couple of problems with that tweet because, um, number one, she says, I was not aware of Mr. Robinson's history prior to our meeting, and I find it very hard to believe that anywhere in Canada, especially after the House of Commons event where everybody stood up and were applauding for what they thought was a war hero, that yeah. didn't instantly become standard operating procedure to Google the name of anyone who asks for a meeting before saying, yes, we will accept it or not. Well, have you seen the... Uh... <laughs> I, I haven't seen anything, but I'm going somewhere. No, no, no. I know where you're going. I'm, I was going to okay. say the tweet from Tommy Robinson. Yeah, yes, exactly. That's, that's, that's why I said it, because I don't, you just cooped me. I'm going somewhere. Um, now, apparently, Tommy Robinson, again, who has a rap sheet as long as an NBA player's basketball, basketball, yeah. NBA player's arm, and um, who defends pedophiles, but only if they're white, and who pays people to have video trucks going along with uh, rather Islamophobic messages, and 
um, who enters other countries on someone else's passport and who has been charged with stalking and uh, defaming a 15-year-old girl, yeah. and other things, um, apparently is was sought or sought a meeting, we are to believe, with her to discuss the IRGC. And again, we are supposed to believe that, hey, my name is Tommy Robinson. I want to have a phone call with you to discuss the Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. And then nobody decides to, again, Google Tommy Robinson to see if he has any expertise whatsoever on the subject of the IRGC that would be of interest to either the chair of the Standing Committee of Justice or a person that somebody has been making the criticism is putting Iran above Ontarians in everything that she does. Um, if you listen to look at her Twitter feed, uh, you might have that same impression as well. Mm. So we're supposed to believe that that he is somehow has some type of expertise that would make it worthy of her taking some of her time as an MPP to spend with him to discuss this subject about which he clearly is not an expert. Mm -hmm. And then she goes, I hope that clarifies. It doesn't clarify. Yeah. Uh, and I notice in this entire statement, you don't express regret or remorse for having met with him now that you know about his history. But I guess you couldn't because you saw he got arrested and championed him. So you didn't clarify, you justified. Yeah. There's no galaxy in which this world makes sense. Out of all the people on the planet that have something to say about the IRGC, Tommy Robinson is not the first person on the list. And number two... How did he know to contact her? Well. Next tweet, Mr. Grizzly. See, this is where it gets funny. I contacted Gamari to ask her out on a date as I'm in Canada. We didn't talk politics. You clowns don't control who can and cannot talk to each other. From Tommy Robinson. Himself. Well. So, either one of two things are going on. Somebody's he's, lying. He's lying about her, which is not hard to believe given that he's probably a little misogynistic and, well, we know he doesn't particularly like brown people. Mm. She's Persian. Yes. But he doesn't like particularly like brown people. So he could have, you know, this whole opportunity to set her up or take her down for some reason. Possibly. Or, again, how did she know? How did he know to contact her to say, hey, I want to talk about the IGRC? And how would she know that he is someone whose call you would take? Now, vice yeah. versa, if he was actually here to call her up on a date, and let's not forget that pretty much as soon as he landed in Canada, um, there was, according to a member of the far right who was also there, again, could be saying stuff, could be real. We don't know. We only have the word to take for it. But uh, that there was a uh, cocaine-fueled uh, meal at a restaurant so much that it unleashed the dragon. Uh, then there was vodka, and then he ended up in a massage parlor. So I'm guessing that uh, if he was indeed actually hard up enough to get coked up and go to a massage parlor within 24, 48 hours of being here, that uh, calling Goldie for a date mm, yeah it's certainly possible um and by date i mean a, a horizontal mambo <laughs> yeah. um so but here comes the question again how does he know to call her so i'm seeing a story of her saying so going as a politician, you know, oh, no, no, we were only going to talk about the IRGC and like this. He's got, no, I was calling the banger. Mm -hmm. He knew to call her. She knew to take his call. 
After the call, she says it was to discuss the RGC, which is highly unlikely that he would have anything in the value. He says that I wanted to date her. That sounds a little more true to me. I don't yeah. know if it is. She's not an unattractive on She's the outside. She's a very beautiful woman. Physically beautiful to look at her. She's very physically beautiful. What is she like as a human being? I have no idea. Well, I mean, we have a little bit of an idea, right? Okay. I mean, she managed to like we, you know, we know now. file her papers eight times. I guess. And, you know, what we saw in that debate, you know, when he was asking that, should have you told your people, um, you know, that uh, you did this, that you had this fact that was embarrassing that might come out uh, later uh, before she had her nomination paper signed? Because uh, she got uh, suspend, her license suspended in 2021 when she was already an MP, MPP. Yeah, before signing those nomination papers, uh, did she let everybody know? So, oh yeah, I haven't like paid my licensing fees <laughs> or the, whatever. That's something that may come out that might embarrass the party a little later. So um, yeah, um, Doug Ford came out, said he was concerned, clearly not concerned enough because he won't come to video, won't have any audio, won't put it on his party's website or party's Twitter feed, won't put it on his own website or Twitter feed and has it delivered by Colin DeMello and uh, says, uh, we had her take the post down about her meeting with him, but not the post about her saying, hey, how is it fair that he's getting arrested while this IGRC guy? That one is still up, though. Yeah, and now, after that, she says, "Well, I was only meet. I was only talk, wanting to talk to him for the IGRC." And she goes, "No, I wanted to bang her. Oh, sorry, date her." <laughs> now, what's Doug Ford going to do with that? Because uh, suddenly, we have two people whose stories are not matching up. Well, what is it, Goldie? Ball's in your court now. And again, that Doug Ford even needs to be asked as soon as he heard that she took his call, she should have been gone. She's a chair of the standing committee on justice and he's in the country illegally. And he took, she took, we don't, a timeline Maybe. yet, we don't know if she took his call after he got arrested or before. No idea. If it's after, that's really bad. It's all bad. None of it's it is all good. bad. None of it is yeah. good. So, um, yeah, Goldie, you have some explaining to do. And Doug Ford, man, by trying to make that go away by pulling a Pierre Poliev. I mean, uh, listen, it worked for Pierre. Yes. But he was at the right, right, right at the beginning of his leadership. You've been around for a while. And you're kind of in your own mess too. So yeah, uh, not impressive. Not impressive. Yeah, like I said, Michael, let's see how Ford handles the pitches to save the Ontario Science Center. Because uh, ever since he tried to give that uh, an emergency killing, uh, people from the community have been offering money to him Fortunately, it's not, unfortunately for him, it's not money he can put in his pocket. <laughs> but uh, it is rather telling that uh, people in Ontario have kind of understood the notion that if you want to get this premier to do anything, the best way to get of his attention is to offer him money. Mm. Anyway, Mr. Grizzly, do we have a show? We do. I feel like... I think I ended the show a little bitchier than I started. <laughs> well, here, let's go with a, a Theo Mudakis uh, cartoon. Yeah, really. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it, for those of you listening, it's the meme of the dog sitting in a room with the room on fire with a cup of coffee. And then, you know, the, the meme where it says, this is fine. Well, this is the dog smiling with a liberal pin on his hat, with a liberal coffee mug, and a picture of Justin Trudeau on the wall in the first panel. In the second panel, his smile is gone while he's reading the newspaper that says by-election. In the third one, he's got a shocked look on his face. And in the fourth panel, it says, maybe this isn't fine. 
<laughs> it's good. It's a good one. It's really good. <laughs> oh man, lovely. Uh, we still got a lot more on that too. You have that that thing you mentioned about the seventy eight candidates who are yeah. We'll see if we can get uh, into so that. Tomorrow. We'll have to get into that uh, some other day. Oh wait, no. You know, Monday. This is Friday. Yeah. This, like I said, there's so much stuff like this. I literally could do like a weekend hour, like to oh, yeah. all the stuff that we missed this week. Yeah. Uh, all right. Is that uh, a show, Mr. Grizzly? It is. It is. And I, I, I hate to wrap up early, but I have my rides here to pick me up in 10 minutes. So Yes. So get some cubs. That's the end of this episode of the Daily Beaver Morning Show. We hope that you like listening to us because we like making this for you. Sharing is caring. Word of mouth is priceless. You have the most beautiful mouths. So spread the word. All right. And if you would like to help us in other ways, then you need to make like Kit Elaine and go to the True North Eagle Beaver Media Incorporated YouTube site where we crossed 3,600. So doesn't look like we'll get for 4,000 for Canada Day, but very, very, very close. Oh, that's still entirely possible. It's 3,686. Yeah, could be. So it's just time is getting maybe on Canada Day. Mm-hmm. I, I doubt before at the rate we're growing, but that's okay. It's the effort that counts. <laughs> so we really appreciate it. Uh, go there and like, share, and subscribe. Click all our buttons. We love it when you do it. Thank you, Kit Elaine. I see you right there in the chat. And uh, if you would like to support us in other ways, please go to our coffee page, which is the QR code that is by Mr. Grizzly's head. And that you're, there you can leave a contribution to the emergency hydration fund there at the Beaver Lodge if you like what we do and you'd like to support us and encourage us to do more. And the QR code that is below my chin, of course, because I missed it, will bring you to our pod page, podpage.com slash the true north eager beaver, lowercase letters with a hyphen between each one of those words. Of course, sponsored by the Ray Girl. Thank you very much. Ah, let's see what else do we have. I guess because democracy is something that you do. Um, get involved in provincial election races in Saskatchewan, British Columbia, and New Brunswick. Very, very important that you do. And Mr. Grizzly, do you have some words of wisdom? Uh, yeah. Get get coffee indeed before you get behind them wheel of a motorized vehicle <laughs> i'm not awake thank goodness i'm just a passenger not a driver before operating any machinery that could place somebody else's life in jeopardy make sure you are alert and awake it's always sage advice i think all so. right <laughs> kids and cubs it can be a tough world out there so please be kind to and uh, gentle with yourself have a great weekend have a great canada day uh i I guess we'll be here Canada Day. Yeah, I'm good. I'm in the morning? Good. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I guess we'll have a Canada Day show for you. All right. Miss Grizzly, I think it's time for you to cue the cock. You are listening to a True North Eager Beaver Media Incorporated podcast. The True North Eager Beaver podcasts are proudly brought to you by our founding sponsors, the Miss V Mysteries from Corvid Moon Publishing your source for science fiction, fantasy, and cozy mysteries featuring a broad diversity of characters. CanadianTarot.com, their uniquely Canadian online eclectic tarot community, and The Pepper Master. Hot pepper sauce is made from farm fresh ingredients to thrill your taste buds and expand your mind. We are grateful to the Cryer Media Network for its support, Pete Jarvis for our artwork, and Paul Joseph something for our opening and closing sequence music. And just a quick little note, because you mentioned it in the notes, Team Canada, the men's soccer team, national team, uh, defeated Peru at the Copa America. It's basically the championship for all. The, may say it was mostly started with South America, but now they're yes. leading the North American teams in as well. Um, so, But that's their first ever win at the Copa America. They have a Chile to play next, and if they do, uh, they advance to the next round. And congratulations go to Marina Stakusic, who is a pivotal in uh, getting the Billie Jean King Cup for Canada. Uh, she is qualified for first grand slam she will be in the main draw of wimbledon nice boom very nice all righty i have got to get out of here i will see you later